Welcome to Salcedo Paranormal. It is Tuesday, November 8th, 2022. And tonight I will be sharing true paranormal stories from the web. As always, you can find all the episodes of the show along with links to social media and ways to contact me at the podcast page. And that is salcedoparanormal.podbean.com. That's S A L. S I D O paranormal dot podbean dot com. Always happy to hear from you all, whether you have comments or questions or topic suggestions or stories of paranormal experiences, whether they're your own or from others that you trust. Happy to either read those or have you join me on the show to talk about them. And a quick note on that I will be doing one of those um, interviews, I guess you could, you could say, uh, th for tomorrow night's show. It just uh, got scheduled um, as of this, basically this morning. And uh, so that should be fun. So I uh, look forward to that, and we'll go from there. Uh, thank you all for being here. I see you all there in the uh, stream chat. And uh, also thank everyone. I want to thank everyone who listens to the podcast and YouTube feeds as well. So um, I have three stories again for you all tonight. And uh, I guess I will get started on them. So, let's see here. Let me get back to the file. This first one is pretty short, but the um, the concept is really amazing. So, I wanted to share it. <clears throat> um, so, this one says, I was driving along the highway back home from work around 10 p.m. I kept seeing something shadowy in my passenger seat. But I couldn't look over, so I chose to ignore it until I got home. Two seconds later, while I'm driving, I see this white, transparent figure just go through my car and myself, like a hologram. I was freaking out and had goosebumps the entire ride home after that. I'm not sure what it was, but I'm still spooked. And that's amazing to me, because that's almost like a... A more extreme version of, of a vanishing hitchhiker. This whatever this was, um, just appeared in this person's peripheral view uh, as a shadow. And but then I wonder if it was the same thing because it seems like it changed. Or uh, after that, there was this this other figure. If it was different, this uh, figure of white, transparent. I guess just light. I don't know. But really amazing that um, that happened. I mean, feel bad for the driver because I can't imagine. Yeah, they didn't really say for sure if it was a white lady, but I mean, it could have been. Uh, I parked there. I see it. Yeah, I don't know. Um, I mean, it, like I said, it sounds like a more usually with those kinds of cases the the apparition will ask or the, the whatever that is <laughs> entity spirit time traveler whatever will ask to get in the vehicle will we'll hit your ride and then vanish um but usually they'll just vanish they won't actually pass through the car or at least the person driving won't see them passing through the car so this one is odd and yeah and, and that maybe she was just quick yeah i don't know um just not interested in going through the the whole um usual method of doing that where they had they had to ask and i wonder and it, it sounds like i'm kind of joking here but i'm not really in a way what if they just didn't even feel like going through all that um or they didn't even know they were seen and they were just hitching a ride but they figured they could do that without being um sensed or noticed so still um just it seems like a more modern possibly version of um, of that kind of vanishing hitchhiker story, uh, just another version of it. So, uh, again, that was a quick one, but um, just the the questions that 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 one raised, I thought were were would be fun to uh, to cover on the show. So, um, but with that, I will move on to the next story. Thank you all for being here. Already getting a good sized crowd. Pre really appreciate that. Uh, again, so but yeah. Um, so this next one here, 
Let me get to it. Okay, this says, this might not be the typical scary story, but nonetheless, I feel that I should share my experience and see if anyone has experienced something similar. I was visiting a family ranch in northern Mexico during the Easter holiday. My sister and I decided to take a ride around the ranch in a ATV, all-terrain vehicle, during the day. We were riding down the dirt road. To our left is a large plot of farming land with loose dirt and to our right is a wired fence. The farming land and wired fence continued for around another 500 feet. We stopped for a moment because my sister and I saw around five distant human-shaped figures. All of them were wearing bright colored shirts like red, yellow, orange uh, shirts. All running full speed through the loose dirt towards the wired fence. Running on loose farming dirt is not easy and not possible to run full speed. All five figures ran towards the fence, jumped over the five foot fence on the first try without slowing down or thinking about slowing down to pass through the fence. Almost seemed like they jumped and floated over. We lost sight of them after they jumped the fence. Too scared to check the area of where they jumped. Just a weird experience. Looking for some feedback. Is that some paranormal stuff my sister and I saw, or did we just see the Mexican Olympic team training? And um, so that's where that story ends. I don't know what to make of that one. Um, it, just in that, it seems like if if this person is right, because I don't, I have no idea about what farmland is like. But if it is that hard to run on loose dirt, um, then it seems like maybe there was it was some kind of apparition or something. Um, and and the way they just they didn't even pause or slow down to jump over the fence is also a bit odd. And then the way that the witness said that they seemed to float over it, and it sounds like it was a wire fence. I wonder if they mean barbed wire, which. Um, that, yeah, see, I was thinking that too, um, La Masfina, I was thinking it would, about sand, because you definitely, I've, I, I mean, I haven't tried running on sand, but my gosh, walking on sand, for me, is hard enough, um, so, yeah, I don't know, with that one, that's, it's, there's nothing odd in, in the appearance of these figures, necessarily, but it's just uh, odd in the way that they, they moved and they acted, and they didn't, they didn't seem to to be worried or have any care regarding what could happen if they ran into that fence. So, and they just, they cleared it right away. So that one, I had to share that because I really, that one is confusing to me how that works. Um, even more so than other some other stories. Some of them kind of fall into patterns that I'm, I kind of, vaguely get but this one i don't know so um so yeah i don't don't know what to make of that one but it's an amazing amazing sighting there makes you wonder the history of the area and if there's some kind of a event although it's i guess that fence would have to have been there or a fence would have to have been there for if it was a residual thing i don't know so Anyway, so that's that second story there, and uh, I have one more to go, so I will get to that right now. Um, this last one is the longest one out of the group. This one says, before I begin, let me just say this is a true story. I'm not really into paranormal stories or movies or anything, because it freaks me out, and I feel like it invites stuff to you. So I'm not the type to go, I'm not the type to go write a creepy pasta or anything. But here it goes. And just for anyone that isn't aware, that's a type of uh fictional horror story that gets posted around 
um, online. So creepy pasta is what that is. It says so. Just a few days ago, I was at a grocery store with my baby in the cart. I was entering an aisle, and from my peripheral, I got a glimpse of a young-looking man, maybe around my age, which is 25. I was mostly looking at his profile, but he had young, smooth skin and a very sharp jawline. And he was wearing a green bomber jacket. He was smiling at my baby, so I knew he was about to look at me and address me. That's how it always goes with people. So when he looked at me, I realized that he's actually very old and has at least one bloodshot red eye. Like he just looked messed up and I honestly wasn't even able to look at him too much. He said to me, hi, sweetheart, in an old voice. I, I'm not a judgmental person, and I love when people give my baby attention at the store. But I do follow my intuition, almost to an obsessive, compulsive extent. My intuition was telling me to walk away. I felt uncomfortable. I chalked this up to maybe he's kind of losing it and might try to trap me in a long, uncomfortable conversation. Let me just say I didn't feel afraid at all. I felt what I think is evil before, and I did not feel that from him. Just uncomfortable, like his energy was overbearing and not something I wanted to be around. So anyway, I smile in his direction and then kept walking. I actually needed something from that aisle, but decided to, to loop around. So when I came back around to the aisle, he was still there, and he was looking in the opposite side that I needed to get to, uh, get to, I guess I mean. So I just went ahead into the aisle. As I was looking for what I needed, my baby started making noises, and I could sense him look at her. I turned around, and this is where it gets weird. This guy now has the exact young face I saw on him originally. This time I'm looking at him straight on, and clearly. He has young skin, no red eye, and he looks like a totally clean-cut guy. Same, exa same exact jacket. Then he says something like, She's so cute. And he has a young voice. After I got home, I realized the similarities between that first um, season of a show, TV show, with a ghost maid who looked young to everyone except one guy who saw her as old with one red eye. Says, that's weird, right? I don't think he was a ghost, but what, what the heck? Also, this guy looked like he could be from the 50s or something. Military green bomber jacket with some normal straight jeans and his hair had a deep side part with it combed over, gelled to the other side. Does anyone have any theories? So that's where that story ends. And um, this one, I've heard... Um, Similar stories of people appearing in different ways to different people or changing appearances, but I never really came across one quite to that extent for the, for this show. Um, and uh, but that's an amazing story. I, I really wonder what the deal was and why um, why uh, this whoever this was was still in that aisle. That to me is also odd. Why didn't they move on? Um, let's see here. Isn't it considered bad luck to not give not to give attention to a baby if you think it's cute? I don't know. Yeah, you have to tap a tight or something. I don't know. But um, the the voice changing and the appearance changing that is amazing to me. Um, but uh, I don't know what to make of that one. I really wonder what else, if there's ever any other strangeness in that grocery store um, that could maybe 
help kind of point in a certain direction. But um, <clears throat> because it seems like that person never really moved moved very far from that aisle. But then I'm guessing if this writer went to that store on a regular basis of any kind and never saw them there, then, so I don't know with that one. Um, but yeah, that, that's a ma an amazing story there. And I don't blame the writer for being uncomfortable and freaked out over that. That is different. I also kind of find it ironic in some of these stories about um, these sightings of figures that seem to change appearance. Not so much the voice, because I would notice the voice, but it's just funny to think that I might not even notice if someone someone changed appearance like that. But, uh, but yeah. Um, let's see here. Looking here at the chat. Um, Mama Sfina says, me and my cousin used to stare at each other's faces in the dark when we went to sleep. Our faces used to morph into the creepiest creatures. Pretty sure it was our eyes playing tricks on us. Uh, but I'll never forget that creepy old woman face hers used to change into. That's amazing. Yeah, I've heard of that. Yeah, I was, I was, that, that is a whole thing too. Trying it with a candle. Yep. Yeah, so, um, but this was in the middle of daytime in a store and, uh, with the, the appearance and the voice changing. So, this is quite the, quite the encounter um but that's uh that's all i have for today so um thank you all for listening and for being here and uh tomorrow like i said i'll have a special guest on the show and uh so that should be a fun fun one and um so that's it for tonight of course thursday will be more um paranormal news and also, for anyone that is listening to this uh, tonight live, um, I'm going to be joining uh, Michael Strange on Trouble Minds Radio. So, um, that should be fun as well. But, uh, anyway, so that's it for now. And uh, I will talk to you all tomorrow night on the next episode of Salcedo Paranormal. Take care, everyone.